let's go over some questions on units and measurements and this comes from tutorial sheet number one the inverse of Zambi how many degrees are in 315 Kelvin how many degrees are in 315 Kelvin well here we need to know the relationship between degrees and Kelvins so the temperature in degrees is actually given by the temperature in Kelvin minus 273 so if you want to be uh, more specific you can also say 273.15 depending with what they want you to use right so the temperature given here in Kelvin that is the 315 minus 273.15 so this is going to give us 41.85 degrees Celsius so that is how we get to convert the next one how many degrees Fahrenheit are in three uh, 30 degrees Celsius so this is actually supposed to be 30.0 degrees Celsius just showing us significant figures there are three uh, three significant figures because of these three numbers so this one is a degree Celsius all right so now how do you get to convert from we've been given temperature in degrees Celsius want to convert to degrees Fahrenheit so actually the temperature in Fahrenheit is given by 9 over 5 multiplied by the temperature in degrees and then plus 32 so this is going to be 9 over 5 the temperature is in degrees Celsius that is 30 and then plus 32 we know of course 5 can go into 30 that is 6 times and then we get to multiply 6 by 9 the answer we get we add to 32 so that is going to give us 86 degrees Fahrenheit and the next one how many Kelvins are in negative 15.5 degrees Celsius so to convert now we want to go to Kelvin uh, to Kelvins we've been given degrees again right for the first one we were given Kelvins we wanted to go to degrees now here we've been given degrees we are going to Kelvin so simply make temperature in Kelvin subject the formula so just take this negative 273.15 the other side so temperature in Kelvin is given by temperature in degree Celsius plus 273.15 so this is going to give us temperature in degree Celsius that is negative 15.5 plus 273.15 so this is going to give us 257 Point six five Kelvin. So that is how you get to work out this one. All right. <coughs> the next question given: the average heart rate of an adult is eighty beats per minute (BPM). How many heartbeats will one's lifespan of seventy years contain? So you want how many heartbeats you are going to have? if you get to live for 70 years if the heartbeat is 80 beats per minute so how do you get to work out this question well we know that the heartbeat you've been given is 80 beats per minute so instead of saying beats per minute which I can also say beats per minute like this I'm going to say 80 beats over minute right it's just the same thing over and pay they mean the same thing now I want to co to find how many heartbeats not pay anything just a number of heartbeats so in other words I want to do away with the minutes which is down here all right so how can we do that firstly I'm going to multiply so that I get to do away with the minutes here now since we have been given 70 years meaning that I first convert the minutes to years and then I'll be able to cancel them so we know we have got a minute down so I'm going to put a minute on top from minutes we can go to hours so I'm going to put an hour down we know that in one hour we have got 60 minutes so the minutes will cancel the minutes so I've got beats per hour now now we don't want again hour so I'm going to convert the hour to days again I'm not plus since I've got hour down I'm going to put hour on top and then a day down 
Now we know that in one day we have got 24 hours. So the hour will also cancel with the hour here. Again, we convert now this day to weeks, right? Since we want to go to years. So I'm going to multiply the day. Since the day is down, I'm going to put it on top. And then we are going to have week down. So you know that in one week we have got seven days. So this day and the day cancels. And then we can convert the weeks to months. So and since we have got a week down, we are going to have a week on top and then a month down. And we know that in one month we have got, that is four weeks if we take an average month. So the week again cancels the week. Now we can convert the month to year. Right, so we're going to multiply. So since we have got a month down, we're going to put a month on top. And then a year down. We know that in one year we have got 12 months. So the month and the month will cancel. Now that we have got a year. So now we have got bits per year. Alright. Now we want to determine how many bits someone is going to have who contains 70 years. Meaning that I just want bits. I don't want the per year. How can I cancel the year? I'm going to multiply by the years which have been given. That is 70 years. So that this year down will cancel with the year there. So we are going to have 80 bits times 60 times 24 times 7 times 4 times 12 and then times 70. So that is going to give us how many bits someone who lives for 70 years is going to have. And this will give us something like 2.7095 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 bits. So if you want to express this just in order of magnitude, since 2.7, this is a number below 5, I can round it off to 1, and then multiply by 10 to the power 9 bits. This is when you're expressing it in order of magnitude. Like that's the range how big the number is. So this number is what? This is a, a billion. So it is in a range of billion bits. Okay, so... We can give it like that. So we can give this one as the exact one. Or we can express it as order of magnitude like that. Right. Question number three. Muiza wants to determine her heart rate. She counts seven pulses in six seconds. What's a heart rate in beats per minute? BPM. What's a heart rate in beats per minute? So the heart rate is given by the number of beats divided by the time, right? Like you want to express in beats per minute. So just have beats on top and then minutes down. So she counts seven pulses, right? So I've got seven. A pulse is simply a beat, right? A pulse is simply a beat. So I'm going to say seven beats divided by six seconds. So she, she has six, seven beats for every six seconds. So I'll say seven over six seconds now we want the answer in bits per minute not bits per second so we'll multiply to cancel the second down i'm going to multiply with the second on top and then i'll put a minute down now that in one minute we have got 60 seconds so this second to cancel with the second six can go into 60 10 times and then we have got seven multiplied by 10 which is 70 and this is going to be 70 bits per minute all right and the last question here you want to give 50 milligrams per kg of photos to a child who weighs 20 kg. The medicine is available in oral suspension labeled 100 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters should be administered? Now, what is available is like what you want to give. You want to give 50 milligrams per kg. Okay, per kg to a child do weighs 20 kg. Now this one we are giving what? 50 milligrams per kg. But the child weighs 20 kg. So you can even determine how much you are going to give this child. Since it is 50 milligrams per kg. Now how many kgs are in 20? That, that is basically 20, right? So that will determine how much you are going to give to that child. So I'm going to multiply 50 milligrams per kg times the 20 kg. Okay, you multiply by the 20 kg. And that is going to give us... This kg will cancel with this kg. So 50 multiplied by 20 
that is 1,000 milligrams. So to this child who weighs 20 kg, 1,000 milligrams is actually supposed to be administered to a child who weighs that amount of uh, kgs, right? Now, from what we've been given is that uh, the medicine is available in oral suspension. So you're supposed to give this this amount of mass of medicine to the to the child. Now the medicine is in liquid form. So we know that when you are using mass, most you get to most when you are de de delivering a solid, you are going to use mass. But when something is a liquid, instead of you measuring it in mass, you are going to measure it as volume, right? So meaning that you need to convert this 1,000 milligrams, which you are supposed to administer to this child. If it is in milliliters, how much of it are you supposed to administer? Okay, so we have been given that you are supposed to administer 100 milligrams per milliliter. 100 milligrams per milliliter. All right, like that. This means that, now since I've got a milliliter down, but I want the answer to be in milliliters, meaning that I need the milliliter to be on top, right? So 100 milligrams per milliliter, this is the same as in one milliliter, you have got what? You have got 100 milligrams. That is 100 milligrams per milliliter, right? And so we are going to multiply this with the, the 1,000 milligrams. So multiply with the 1,000 milligrams. We are going to see this will cancel with this. Okay, so 100 into 1,000, the two zeros will cancel with the two zeros. That is going to give us 10. And multiply by a milliliter, that is going to be 10 milliliters. Meaning that 10 milliliters has to be administered. 